Hello and welcome back. Thank you for joining us for another episode on our Fundamentals of Engineering review for the Environmental Engineering exam. Today we're going to be talking about fluid pressures and atmospheric pressures and how to measure them, how to calculate specific gravity from densities based on uh, fluid, uh, fluid columns. And so in our first problem, we're only going to do two problems today. We're going to do kind of a quick episode. So in our first problem, we're going to be determining atmospheric pressure from a barometer and looking at how a barometer works and basically the math involved and the engineering involved there. In our second problem, we're going to be looking at the, this one's a little more difficult to explain, but how to determine specific gravity based on pressure, a known pressure at depth, and essentially uh, comparing that to the pressure we would expect if it were water, and using that to calculate the specific gravity for some unknown fluid. Okay, so let's get started on problem one. So a barometer you probably have an idea of how these work. It's essentially a reservoir, reservoir of a fluid and you have atmospheric pressure working on that fluid and it's pushing the fluid up into some sort of chamber, a sealed vessel. And essentially what they do, they fill this vessel with the fluid, they invert it, and then the fluid of course tries to fall down the chamber except you have atmospheric pressure pushing it back up and so you wind up with this uh, fluid column with a height equal to atmospheric pressure almost the one sort of catch here is because you have a fluid inside this chamber you obviously are not going to have a perfect vacuum here what's going to happen is this fluid and really any fluid's going to do this, it's going to evaporate and create a vapor pressure inside this sealed uh, you know, cylinder or chamber. And so you're going to have a pressure here equal to the vapor pressure of whatever fluid you're using. Uh, and of course that can change based on temperature, so you know it can be a little bit um, you know, not necessarily a, a static variable here, and you may have to make some adjustments based on temperature, or obviously you would want to choose a fluid that's going to have a very steady vapor pressure. And so we're going to have a fluid with a vapor pressure of 0 0.2 pascals and a specific gravity of 13.6. And this is roughly the characteristics you would see with mercury, which is often used in barometers because of its low vapor pressure and high specific gravity. And we're going to use a height tier of one meter from the fluid surface to the height within the chamber, right? Um, so what we have here in terms of an equation, the pressure of the atmosphere is going to be equal to oops, the vapor pressure plus the density of the fluid times gravity times height. So anytime you're talking about the pressure associated with a fluid column, then this is always really your go-to um, equation here. This is how you define pressure based on height of a fluid. And in this case, because we have the vapor pressure working against the atmospheric pressure, right? It's pushing down on the fluid. Uh, atmospheric pressure is essentially pushing up. So we have to uh, you know, subtract one from the other. Okay, so we have The pressure of our atmospheric pressure is going to be our 0 
pascals of our vapor pressure plus the specific gravity because we don't know the density uh, or we at least weren't given it we could if we knew it was mercury we could of course look it up but we can also calculate it by multiplying the density now of course this is density because it's specific gravity it's relative to water right so water would be one uh, specific gravity of 13.6 means it's 13.6 times more dense than water is so if we can multiply that by the density of water which of course is a thousand kilograms per cubic meter is at least one way of representing it times acceleration due to gravity 9.81 meters per second squared and then we have our height of one meter okay so and that is actually that's in pascals so um, and then we could divide by one pascal in or one sorry kilopascal in a thousand pascals so in that case we would have 133.4 kilopascals, which is equal to about 1.32 atmospheres. I hope I got the, my units right on that. All right, so that's it on that one. Uh, in the next one we're going to be looking at, we have a uh, at 30 feet below a fluid surface. So here we have atmospheric pressure. 30 feet below that, we have a pressure of 2,600 pound force per square foot. And so what we want to do is find the specific gravity of this unknown fluid. And, you know, that's not super difficult because we have, we can use that same concept of knowing that uh, rho GH density, gravity, height is going to um, give us, you know, be equal to the pressure. So we can, from that, we know pressure, we know height, we can find density. Of course, we know gravity, obviously. And then it's just a matter of setting it relative to water's uh, density. So our specific gravity is going to be our pressure divided by the density of water times gravity height um, and then in this case, so we have, that's our rho GH, and then since we're working in conventional units, we are going to divide by the gravitational um, conversion that basically makes pound mass and pound force be numerically equal to each other. So our specific gravity it's going to be our 2600 pound force per square foot. We have the density of water here. Which um, We have our gravitational constant, we have our depth, and then we have our conversion factor. Pound force, second squared, over pound mass, feet.
Okay, so from here, it's really just a plug and chug, right? So we have everything we need. We can calculate our specific gravity to be 1.39. So it's a you know, little bit heavier than water, more dense than water. Okay, well, that's it for today's episode. Um, I hope that was useful to you if you are looking to take the FE soon. Uh, certainly good luck. I know it's a very stressful time for a young engineer. And uh, I definitely appreciate you watching the channel. And if you want to help our channel be one of our founding subscribers, then, well, you know how it works. And we definitely appreciate your support very much. Thank you.